So now I have a paint palette and I'm going to clean my brush really well and I'm going to start over again with the white. And I can see on my cloth that I didn't get it clean enough. Really going to clean that brush well. And when you're working with paints, the rule is to start with the weaker or lighter color because it's more easy to change than a darker or stronger color. So I've put just a small amount of white on my palette. I don't need much more than that because I'm really just painting these small areas. I'm going to use another brush to dip some green and put it along the side. Then I'm going to start to mix it in. And what I'm going for is the lightest version of my color that I can get and still see that there's green in it. These colors do change a little bit when they dry. Most of them tend to get a little darker. That's okay. Mix it really well so that when you paint it down, you don't have any streaks. And I'm rubbing off the extra paint so I don't have a big globby amount on my brush. And because this is my lightest value, I'm going to paint it in the number one spot. If mixing colors and painting is relatively new to you, it's not a bad idea to have a piece of scrap paper nearby so you can test your colors on them. We use test strips in my Art Fundamentals class when we do color wheels so that they can test them and make sure they've gotten 50% halfway between each color when they do a change. And I am asking you to try to make even changes in value, meaning lightness and darkness, between each color. So there's my first one. I really don't need to clean my brush because I'm still working with the same colors. So I'm going to pull down some more green and I'm going to be making two in between here and here. So I think I'm going to need some more green because it's going to need to be a, you know, a fairly good size change in order to bridge the gap between the two. And I think that looks pretty good. It's got nice body but it's not terribly dark yet. And you may have noticed that when you add white to a color, it makes it more opaque. The streaks are not showing up quite as much. Like you can't see the paper through it as much. So I'm gonna go ahead, paint it in. Make sure I get it all the way to the edges. It's your choice if you wanna see the black line in between them. I prefer to get rid of it. Go up into the corner. Sometimes wiggling the brush does a nice job of getting it into corners. And now I'm going to do one more. Trying to get that green have a little more oomph to it. So that it's halfway between here and here. So I'm going to need some more paint. But you can see I haven't added any more white. In fact, I've got quite a bit of white left over. So the black and white containers that I gave you guys this week, you should have enough, really, to paint your whole painting. A little bit of these paints go a long ways, if you're careful about how you mix them. And I totally understand if mixing paints and colors is new to you and you need to get more of a color, that's okay too but I would just advise you to sort of go slow, add little bits at a time until you get it where you want it to be. So that looks, well, it looks a little darker. I'm gonna paint it down and we'll see when it dries if it's got enough color in it. You can always go over these paints with another color unless you're trying to color something really light and see-through like yellow on top, top of something dark like blue or green or basically anything other than yellow. There we 
there we go one two three okay now I'm gonna clean off my brush 